What's up tribe? So today's video is highly requested and that is how I make my Ayurvedic hair butter. Now as you can see my hair is super lustrous, super shiny, well moisturized and it helps me retain a lot of length and prevent split ends as well. So this hair butter is jam packed with vitamins, nutrients, and Ayurvedic herbs to penetrate deep down into your hair shaft, prevent breakage, add to moisture, uh, prevent split ends, and just give your hair an all around moisturous, lustrous feel. So before we get into the video, I want to share with you guys these beautiful, amazing waist beads that I received from Culture Waist Beads. Now when you go on their website, there are so many different beads and styles for you to choose from. I told her exactly the colors and the vision that I wanted and when I received these in the mail, you guys, I was blown away by the quality of these waist beads. They are beautiful and I've really been wanting some African waist beads for a very, very long time and I said, you know what, they'll come to me when the right time is right, <laughs> when the time is right and so when she reached out to me on Instagram. I just knew that I had to share this company with you guys. It's a black owned company and she's absolutely amazing. So I'm going to leave all of her information down below so you guys can go ahead and support her and go check out her website. And may I add that I just feel so regal when I wear these waist beads, especially with my head wrap. <laughs> All right, so now let's get into what you're gonna need for your Ayurvedic hair butter. So you're gonna need a container. Now, if you're gonna whip your hair butter, then you can whip it in a regular you know, container and then transfer it to a glass. I just think glass looks a lot better and more aesthetic. Then you're gonna need a cheesecloth. You're gonna need a cheesecloth and a lot of it because you are going to be straining thirst. Now we have our shea butter. Now shea butter provides moisture to dry and damaged hair from the roots to the tips. It's a great sealant, it has vitamin A and E and it prevents breakage and split ends. Okay, so up next we have our Brahmi powder and this is the Ayurvedic herb that we're going to be using and this contributes to thicker hair. It strengthens your hair, it repairs damaged follicles, it promotes hair growth, and it helps with itchy scalp. You can also use henna powder if you like, but today we're going to use Brahmi. Next up is our coconut oil. Now a lot of people don't like coconut oil, I just use a little bit of this. And this is really good for a scalp health. It adds luster and shine to your hair. It prevents split ends and breakage. And the molecules are small enough to penetrate your hair shaft. All right, up next we have evening primrose oil. Do not sleep on this oil, it's amazing. It's great for hair rejuvenation, promotes hair regrowth, nourishes your scalp, helps hair loss due to hormonal issues. It's amazing and it's not very greasy at all. All right, you guys, next we have the OG, and that's olive oil. It softens and deeply moisturizes your hair. It's a great detangler, and it fights dandruff, eliminates split ends, and it has a lot of antioxidants and vitamin E and K. Next up, we have our other Ayurvedic herb, and that is hibiscus. Now, with hibiscus, you guys, it stimulates hair growth. It's rich in nutrients such as amino acids that are necessary for producing keratin. It's amazing, and the color is really pretty too. <laughs> okay, you guys, next up, we have lemongrass essential oils. You can put whatever essential oil you want, but I'm gonna use the lemongrass, and it strengthens your hair follicles, and it prevents hair from shedding. Thank you. 
Next up, we're gonna use Lang Lang and it improves the texture and reduces your hair from breaking and falling. It's amazing and it smells really good. So let's get into how we're gonna make it. Oh, yep, yeah. and you're also going to need a pot and a smaller pot, kind of like a double boiling method because we don't want to cook these completely on top of the stove. So this is the best method, unless you want to infuse first, but this is quicker. <laughs> Let's get started. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and add my shea butter. I'm gonna use probably about a cup, maybe a little less, maybe half a cup of shea butter. That's about a cup, yeah, about a cup of shea butter. <laughs> and next, I'm gonna go ahead and use my coconut oil. And like I said, I'm not gonna use a whole lot of this. I probably use about a good two tablespoons, maybe three. Like I said, you can always switch out these ingredients and use the butters and different things that suits your hair more. Just don't forget about those Ayurvedic herbs. Those are the most important part. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add in the even primrose oil and I probably use about a good two tablespoons of this as well. Next is the extra virgin olive oil. I love extra virgin olive oil. I use it to detangle my hair, it's amazing. So we're gonna use probably about, yeah, three tablespoons, maybe a little bit more of that. And next is your Brahmi powder. Now, do as I say, not as I do. Do not use a lot of this when you're doing this method. Now, if you're gonna infuse Brahmi in oil prior to you making the butter, that's perfect. But if you're gonna do it this way, the quicker method, don't put a lot of the Brahmi powder in there because unless you strain it very, very good over and over, it's gonna be a little gritty. So just make sure that you don't over, overdo it with the Brahmi. You're still gonna get the same benefits. And the same goes for the hibiscus. I probably used about a tablespoon of the hibiscus and I probably used about two tablespoons of the Brahmi, if not more. And like I said, um, it's gonna give you a very beautiful color, but don't overdo it with the hibiscus. And that's how it looks. Oh, the colors are so pretty, oh my God. Now to get your or, or your butter really, really um, prominent with the hibiscus color, use white shea butter. I didn't want to use my white shea butter. I wanted to use the rest of this up, but use white shea butter and that color will really, really pop. And this is how it all looks together. And we're gonna go ahead and throw it on the stove and let it melt down. So I'm gonna fill up the bottom pot with water and then just put that right on top and let it melt that way. Do not cook this directly on the stove, okay? <laughs> Them. gonna burn all the properties <laughs> so this is how it looks about 15 minutes in um, as you can see everything is nice and incorporated we're all good and now took it off the stove I'm gonna give it a little bit of a stir now at this point you can go ahead and um, well we're gonna strain it first so I'll just tell you after we strain it so I have my jar now, like I was saying that um, if you want to whip it, whip it in, you know, the container that it's in, let it cool, whip it, and then you can transfer it. But I am going to just go ahead and pour it straight into the container. So we're going to go ahead and take our cheesecloth and put it right on top of our glass container. You don't want to pour anything hot into plastic. That's counterproductive. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and strain the mixture through the cheesecloth into our container. Now, if you want to, you can let it cool down in whatever you melted it in and whip it, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put it straight in the container. And that's how it looks after I've strained it. You can strain yours a couple times if you really wanna get as much of the powder out, but I don't mind it. It kind of just infuses more over time. Okay. 
Now we're gonna add in the essential oils and I'm using this combination because it smells amazing together. <laughs> so I added about 19 drops of the lemongrass and then I added about a good maybe seven or eight drops of the Lang Lang. This is Lang Lang, so seven or eight drops of this. And then I'm gonna give it a quick stir just to incorporate all of the essential oils. And that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna leave this to its own vices to solidify. And every five minutes I just took a chopstick and mixed it so that it would become a whipped like consistency without me having to actually whip it. And this is how it looks after it solidifies. You guys, it is so creamy. It's so moisturizing. It's almost like a mousse consistency. It absorbs amazingly. It's not gritty. I love this butter. Like I said, I do it a little different every time, um, but this is pretty much how it turns out every time. Just amazing. Let me know if you guys try this butter out and let me know the essential oils that you would use if you don't want to use these essential oils that I'm using. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to rate, comment, and join into the tribe. I love all of you guys. Bye.